very pleased that uh, this segues nicely into introducing Viscount Monkton, uh, polymath. He's a puzzle maker. Uh, he might uh, like to talk to us about the puzzles. Uh, he, uh, he's the author of a book precisely on this question, on the famous hockey stick graph that, uh, that adorned the IPCC report, I think, in 2005. Uh, he was an advisor to Margaret Thatcher, uh, and as, as, has been, as, has been, as has been mentioned, he is, he is the occasional scourge to the clerk of the House of Lords. Viscount Mountain, thank you very much. My Lord, that's me whether the clerk likes it or not. Ladies and gentlemen, after that magnificent introduction, I just can't wait to hear what I'm going to say. <laughs> but let me begin with a little science, because it is about science, this global warming question, and about economics. I'm going to start with science and end with economics. I'd like you all to turn around and look outside this tent, please. What is the prevailing colour? colour of the ground cover there that you see? Anyone? Green. green, thank you. Hands up all those who are greens. Yes, come on. We are greens. We believe, as James eloquently said in his opening, in keeping our planet green. Now, here's a science question then. How, how many of you are in favour of a zero carbon world? Good, that's the right question, because that kind of rhetoric is what we've been having to put up with for far too long. Where does the carbon come from that is in the grass and the leaves and the tree trunks? Nearly all of those tree trunks are solid carbon. Where does that carbon come from? Does anybody know? Well, I'll tell you. It doesn't come from the ground. It comes from carbon dioxide in the air. So if we add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, what happens to trees and plants is that they grow more actively and more quickly. And in the 30 years, in the 30 years since, when satellites, since when satellites have been watching, the net primary productivity of plants, which is the rate at which they grow and produce greenery, has increased by 6%. And the reason why is the carbon dioxide that we are adding to the atmosphere. But most of you are surprised at that suggestion because the media don't tell you this stuff, but you'll find it in any elementary textbook of plant biology. It's not complicated. It is so. If we double the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, then the yield of many of the staple crops upon which the world depends will increase by up to 40%. And those plants will also be able to use less water. So in other words, there can be some rather good things that come out of carbon dioxide. I've already pointed out that the rate at which the world is warming is less than one-third of the central estimate which the IPCC predicts for the next 90 years. There is therefore no scientific basis for the very, very huge increase that it is predicted. But let's pretend that they're right. How many of you here think that because it's a consensus, therefore we have to believe what the consensus says? Hands up. Well, I'm glad to see there are not many who just go along with the notion of consensus that Ms. Hibbert hinted at. Just because a lot of scientists are told, are told to us to say that they believe a certain thing doesn't mean that they do say it, still less that they believe it, still less that it is so. The idea that just because these scientists are said to say these things. Therefore, we have to believe in global warming is the ancient Aristotelian fallacy of the head count. And science is not done, and never has been done, and never will be done, by head count. It is done by research. But let's be nice to the consensus people. Let us accept that if you add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, you will get some warming. The question is, how much? The answer is, not a lot. But let's suppose it's going to be as much as the usual suspects tell us it is. 3.4 Celsius in the coming 90 years, an equivalent of nearly 4 Celsius per century over the next 90 years on current emissions. That's the IPCC's central estimate. Let's pretend that that's correct. Then the question is, what is the most cost-effective way of dealing with that economically? 
And it turns out, and this is the unanimous view, very nearly unanimous view, <laughs> in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. I say very nearly because I'm not aware of any papers that say the opposite, but there may be some. I can't claim to have read everything. <laughs> but in the very nearly unanimous view of the economic peer-reviewed literature, it is an order of magnitude cheaper to do nothing than to try to spend money on making global warming go away. That is the consensus in the peer-reviewed economic literature. Like it or not. That is right. Stone, first of all, is not the peer-reviewed <coughs> economic literature. His report was not peer-reviewed, nor was that of Professor Garnett. But since you raised Stern, sir, let me answer your question by saying that Stern, first of all, assumed as his central estimate, not the 3.4 Celsius this century, that is the IPCC central estimate of warming, but 5 Celsius, nearly 50% up on the central estimate of the IPCC was his central estimate. Then he greatly exaggerated the amount of damage that that would do and the cost of it beyond what the IPCC would regard as correct. But the third and most catastrophic thing that he did was he used a 0.1% pure rate of time preference intertemporal discount rate in working out whether to spend money now or whether to let future generations spend it instead. The correct rate, <laughs> thank you sir, yes, you didn't know what I was talking about. And that's part of the trouble here. Because the standard economic analysis of any intergenerational comparison of this kind, appraisal of this kind, is to use a discount rate of not less than 5%. That, too, is the consensus figure in the peer-reviewed economic literature. And if you bring, if you bring that 5% discount rate, Madam, later, please. Uh, I'd like a little extra time, so as to deal with it. Please, please, please right. take, you, you have 20 seconds extra. And, Thank you very and, much. And we should, we should let the speaker Thank speak. You. And therefore, if you correct for Stern's discount rate and make him use 5% instead of 0.1, which is absurdly low, then the cost of doing nothing is, is one-tenth of the cost of spending any money today on trying to do something. And whatever we spend on trying to make global warming go away. As Garneau says in his report, and rightly so, we can't spend on saving starving children in Africa, on keeping our planet green, on doing the things that we feel that we should do with that money. If we waste that money on global warming, which won't go away, we can't spend it on the people who are starving now, who need our help now, who have water shortages now, who have disease shortages, uh, of disease control now. These people need our help now. Are we going to spit on them and say, no, we will not help you because we want to stop the planet becoming green? That's our eight minutes. Think about it. Bagger Mountain, please, Moncton, please stay at the podium. Please stay at the podium. Catherine mm -hmm. Martin, you have Viscount Mountain in the dock. Okay, it's, uh, this is a little bit awkward, this. Um, it's a bit difficult to know where to start with all that, so I'm, I'm not gonna, I, I really don't wanna sink into that, that, that pit of yours with that ridiculous logic, but I, I want to... I want to Welcome uh, to ask science, let, mate. Well, no, 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 sir, let me ask you about science, then. Let me ask you about what your credibility is, then, because you uh, are... No, as no, the lady no, no, we're going ad hominem there. Can we no, stick not. We're to the science and the economics? Ten points. No, sir, you're not controlling the terms of this debate. We, we have a question, please. A question is, right. on your credibility, why... My question is, can you... Tell the audience, please, why should they give you any credibility, given you're not a scientist, you points. are on record as having said that you are a member of the House of Lords and have the House points. of Lords uh, uh, take out censure against you, and, so, and you are writing to John McCain claiming you're a Nobel Peace Laureate when you're clearly not. Given that is your record, sir, why should we believe anything you have to say? I invite the chairman to read the box from my passport that says who I am. <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure that... Uh, well, I, let, let me mechanically say Viscount Monckton of Brenchley. Christopher Walter, British citizen. So, you know, let, 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 let's concede the Viscount his... Oh, you can be a Viscount, but not a member of the House of Lords. Right. Um, I'm glad to see that the Honourable Gentleman thinks he's an expert on who is and who is not a member of the House of Lords. I I'm did just not going on what the Clerk of the House of Lords said. I see. So you're an expert on the Clerk of the House of Lords and his opinions, are you? <laughs> right. 
Now, who would like me to talk about the House of Lords and who would like me to talk about the climate? I'm going you to take like that. To talk about your I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that as a free kick, and I'm going to talk a bit more about the climate. Can I, can what I I'm going to say? Yes. 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 What I'm going to say? What I'm going to say? Hey, hey, hey! hey. The audience gets their turn. What I'm going to say is this. Okay, so sorry, sorry. Question. We have a question. Question. I think, yes. I think the, 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 the question. When you, when, you, when, you, when you say that science is done by research and not by consensus, yes. um, I mean, it's done by research, the scientists have done the research, they've all come to the same conclusion. No, they haven't. Which is, the, the huge majority have come to the same conclusion. No, they haven't. Which is that... Yes, they have. Which, which, which scientists have you been talking to? Right, let, um, me, let me start. There are I mean, nearly 1,000 scientists, for instance, who have contributed <laughs> to papers over the last just on one subject over the last uh, 25 years, st stating that all over the world, the medieval warm period was real, was global, and was considerably warmer than the present. There's a thousand of them. And that's just for starters. Then we go on to the central question of this debate, which is not whether the planet is warming. We concede that it's been warming for the last 25,000 years. It's been warming, if you go for a shorter time scale, for the last 300 years, during 260 of which we cannot have been to blame. However, if we go on to the question about climate sensitivity, how much warming there no, has been, there are, only a few, there are only a few dozen you can, scientists you can make your who own have studied. Again, but you there are, there are only a few dozen story. scientists who yeah, have no. studied that question, and of those, the majority have come to the conclusion that the amount of global warming we will expect is considerably lower than that which the models of the IPCC time, suggest. Time over, and um, just to note that we did have a reference to the majority of scientists. Um, but <laughs> nevertheless, time over, and uh, uh, there'll be ample opportunity to come back on this. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.